everybody. No Drama Makeup Mama here. If it is your first time joining me, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy this. And if not, welcome back. Hello, hello, hello. So tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. Ooh, different. How, Jessica? Tell me. Okay, I'll tell you. Um, I'm going to do the top 10, or what I consider the top 10, beauty mistakes. And this is about picking things, application, all things like that. So that's, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Let's take my glasses off because it's serious. Um, half my face, I'm gonna do what a common mistake is. And then the other half, I'm going to do the way that it will look better. So you guys can see the difference, okay? So first, and this isn't even one of my common mistakes, but it is a very common mistake. Um, is not properly prepping your skin. Um, you have to have some kind of skincare. Oh, sorry. You have to have some kind of skincare regimen in, in place in order to really maximize your makeup because your your makeup's only going to look as good as your skin looks. So um, I haven't moisturized or anything yet. So I I have been using the Farsali Unicorn Essence. Um, I really enjoy this. It's an antioxidant skin enhancing serum, and it. <sighs> It's just awesome. Like, I I don't know what is in it exactly that makes it, I mean, it smells really good. I mean, the unicorn thing obviously is a little kitschy and obviously they're doing that, you know. But it is really good. I got the $20 little tiny bottle because I wanted to try it because I see it all over Instagram and I'm like, okay, let me try it. Um, and it's one of those things, you know, like I bought the $20 Tatcha but because I like Touch and Soul so much, I'm probably not gonna get a big Tatcha, but I'm probably gonna cough up the money and get the big first Ollie because I really do see a difference in my face. I am putting my daytime moisturizer on because even though it's nighttime, you put day cream under makeup. Do not ever, that is also a thing. Guys, just a pro tip. Don't ever use a night cream under your makeup. And I'll tell you why. Because most night creams have some kind of ingredient or a multiple, multiple ingredients that help your skin renew during the night. And what that means is that it is actively sloughing off your dead skin cells and trying to renew your cells at night. So if you put a night cream or a thicker cream that's designed for nighttime um, on your face before you put your foundation on your foundation is gonna roll off like you'll start seeing it just kind of flake and separate It's just it's not good. It's not good. So in that same vein um, Primers, you know, you don't have to use a primer in fact on this side of my face I'm not going to use a primer. I will use one on this side so you can see the difference it's not a necessary step. It's not something you have to do. Some people love primers. Some people are like, I don't see the point. And that is one of those like personal things. Like you either like primers or you don't. Um, if you don't think they do, they do anything, then don't use it. But if you've tried it and you're like, ooh, okay, okay this is something I could do. Um, I find too, like with the pore filling primers, obviously that's a good thing. Um, if they work and a lot of times putting a primer on just helps make your makeup last longer and that's really the whole shebang for me is I just want to I'm not putting it under that eye I'm just wiping my eyes um because yeah okay so my skin is primed so now we're gonna go on to the first common beauty mistake foundation now there are a lot of different ways you can go wrong with foundation and there are a lot of common mistakes. Number one, there is not one foundation that is universally going to look good on everyone. And I think that sometimes, I mean, I do it too. You see someone else with something on and you're like, oh my God, that's gorgeous on them. So you go and get it and it doesn't perform the same way and you're like, why is it not performing, blah, blah, blah. You know, but everybody has different skin and everybody has different concerns. Everyone has different coverages that they like. Um, so picking the right foundation for you is a personal journey and it really is and that's why I said you know Sephora is a great place to go because you can get samples and you know try things out um, if you don't have a Sephora near you and you have an Ulta you know you can try things in the store when you are foundation matching 
there are lots of schools of thought on this. I've talked about this before, but here's my philosophy and this is why I say this. One, this is how I was trained when I went to school to be a makeup artist. Um, when I went to my makeup artist schools. Um, but, you know, some people are like, oh, you just try it on your, on your wrist and that's the same color as your face. Or, oh, you try it, you know, on the center of your face. Or, oh, you match with your whatever. My recommendation to you is to put the color right here because this is the closest thing to this. So you wanna match your neck because your neck is the closest thing to your face. So if your foundation doesn't match your neck, that's gonna be the most noticeable thing. So that's my two cents on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my Wet n Wild that I always use and I am gonna use my, color, my custom enhancers with it. Um, and then on the other side of my face, I am going to use, no, this one, the Catrice one. Okay, because this is a mattifying foundation and I have dry skin. If you have dry skin, you do not want a mattifying foundation because it's just gonna make you look drier. If you have oily skin, you don't want a radiant foundation. And also, if you have oily skin, or even if you don't, when you put those stripes and blend it in to color match, give it a minute because a lot most foundation oxidizes and what that means is that when the air connects to the skin with your foundation it turns a color normally it oxid um, oxidation happens and it turns it's kind of orange so you want to leave it on there maybe walk around the store a little bit um and then go outside and check it and if it looks good in natural light then your aces so actually that leads me to my second, before I even, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna talk about my second mistake while I'm doing my foundation. My second mistake that people make all the time is putting your makeup on in a vanity lighted, lit vanity mirror. Don't do that guys. Like I know that there's a whole market out there who's probably now crushing my soul and hoping that I fail on YouTube because I'm saying this. But if you do your makeup with an LED, you know, vanity mirror, you're gonna look fierce in that mirror, but then you're gonna walk outside and look like a train wreck because LED lighting is not the same as natural lighting. So if you're trying to, now if you're gonna, if you're going for photography, yes, use a vanity mirror. If you're going to perform on a stage, yes, use a vanity mirror. But if you're doing your everyday makeup, you should not be using a lit vanity mirror because those lights are not the same as sunlight. So as soon as you got out of, your, out of your house, something that might have looked great in these really bright LED lights that give you rings in your eyes all day, but then when you actually go outside, you're gonna be like, oh my God, what did I do? So don't do that. Don't do it. So I'm gonna use the same technique on both sides. I actually don't mind this foundation, but I didn't prime on this side and it is mattifying, so you should be able to tell the difference, hopefully. If not, I failed. But this color is my color, and that is a good thing. And once you find the right color foundation that you like, if you wanna try other ones, take that foundation with you when you go somewhere. Like if you go to a drugstore, you go to Sephora, you go to Ulta, take what you use now with you because one if you go to sephora especially they're gonna know like okay well she uses blah 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 now so this is gonna be a really similar or better to, and the same kind of vein foundation um so that's how you do that i think is the best way to do it because if you know it matches now if you think it's a little off bring it and ask their advice that's what they're there for um, now I will tell you, you know, I used to work for Ulta. I'm not bashing Ulta. I'm just saying that if you're not talking to somebody that's in, and even if you are sometimes, talking to somebody that's in that prestige area, they might not know what they're talking about. Um, Ulta hires salespeople. Like they're there to sell. So they're gonna say what they think they need to say in order to get you to buy what they want you to buy. So, you need to trust your eyes, trust your instincts when it comes to that kind of thing. And like I said, look outside. Like just be like, hey, I'm gonna step out a second. 
Look at look at your face in the sunlight, and if it matches in the sunlight, then you're good to go. All right. So this is mixing my custom enhancer drops, the Cover Effects in Halo, which is kind of an iridescent, glowy color. And I'm gonna do that on the other side on my face. So that's the two sides. There's not a whole lot of difference. Um, I wish you guys could look close. Ugh. I really do because like on this side you can see my pores around my nose and on this side I have like no pores because I put a pore filling primer on first and this side of my face is a little bit more radiant but I don't know if it's translating that well okay mistake number two mistake number two is concealer when you buy concealer, yes, you're trying to conceal. But first you need to ask yourself, what am I trying to conceal? Are you trying to conceal blemishes or are you trying to conceal under your eyes? Those are two different products. Sometimes it's sometimes you can find one that works for both, but here is what the mistake that people make is. The mistake that people make is, is when they pick their color. A lot of times people will pick a concealer based on the color of their foundation and make it match. That is not how you wanna pick a concealer. A concealer should be at least one shade lighter than your natural skin tone because one, they do oxidize. So if you put a color on that's the same color as your skin, it's gonna look muddy. Um, it ends up looking like that, you know what I'm talking about, where it looks bunchy and kind of muddy. Um, but if you go lighter, I am gonna use the Sephora Future Bright under on the, the, the bad side because this is not a concealer that I think is good for under your eyes. So I'm gonna use this under my eyes. And I got a little, a little something down there. But see, as you can tell, this is this is probably closer to two shades lighter than my natural skin color. Um, that's, I mean, that's where you wanna go with it. You wanna go lighter. And, want, and like I said, because if you go the same shade or you go even a little darker, I mean, some people are like, oh, I need to go darker. Don't do that. That's like the worst. It's like, hey, call attention to everything. And if you're getting one for under your eyes, especially, you want it to be warm toned, like a yellow, if you're trying to hide dark circles. Um, so I would say the paler the better, but I tried that, that LA girl when I tried, I was like, that's too pale. Okay. So, that's with that one. It doesn't look bad. I'm not saying it looks bad, per se. But, where's my baby? Where's my baby? Not you, Larry. You're my other baby. But seriously, where's my Catrice concealer? Oh, right in front of my face. Always. Whenever I look for something, it's literally right in front of my face. Okay. Okay. So this Catrice concealer is a full coverage concealer and that's something you have to think about too. Like if you're like, oh, it looks too cakey or oh, it's too blah, blah, blah or whatever, you know, you need to, you need to read stuff instead of don't just trust what I say or what any other person on here says or, you know, you've got to do you and what you like might not be what I like or what another YouTuber likes. If you don't want a heavier coverage under your eyes because you don't think it looks good then don't do it i mean simple as that there's no canon law but there are mistakes that are made and that's what this video is about so i'm just blending that one out and you'll be able to tell the difference i can tell the difference and then again i'm like i don't know the more makeup i put on the more you're going to be able to tell the difference I think I could be wrong okay so this next part is gonna pain me but I'm not gonna set under my eyes on this side I I'm not putting that as a mistake I'm just showing you the difference like why you set under your eyes um the next thing I'm going to talk about, the next mistake. So we've got vanity mirrors, we've done foundation, we've done concealer. So number four is the order in which you put products on. 
This is very important, guys, and I will tell you why. So, some people like to use cream or liquid highlighters or cream or liquid contour. Those are products that need to go on before you put powder on your face. Once you've put powder on your face, do not put a liquid or a cream on your face over it because all that's going to do is pill up and look muddy. Um, once the powder is down, it's just like when you add water to flour. You know, you can't take that water back out. It bunches up, it clumps up, and it doesn't look good. Same thing on your face. So if you put powder down, once you've put powder down, and I'll show you, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna powder both sides of my face with, I'm actually gonna use the Bye Bye Pores tonight. Maybe. Yes. All right. So I'm going to get a brush. So I'm powdering both sides. Keep in mind, I did not set my eye cream, which is killing me. But some people don't do that, and that's fine. But the thing is, is people are like, oh, the powder creases under my eyes. If you're using the wrong powder, yes. But if you use a powder that's designed for that kind of thing, then no, it won't. And I didn't do my chin because I'm doing half my face and it's got me all confused. But, okay, so you're starting to see an obvious difference. I, I mean, I can see it. I hope you can see it. If you can't, you may be blind. No, I'm just kidding. I should have had my husband in here looking to see if he can see a difference, but... He's not in here, so. I can see a difference. No, you can't. Not from there. You can't. You're blind as a bat. Yeah, like, Alright, so now what I'm going to do is, even though this pains me, I'm going to use a cream contour over the powder that I just put on my face to show you what happens when you do that. So I'm just going to draw my regular contour. Ugh. And like when you start putting it on, you can feel it. Like you can feel that it's not right. <laughs> like, like it's different. It's definitely one of those immediate, like it's a mistake thing. And oh God, what do I do? It's a mistake. Um, I'm just going to take a brush and try to blend it. But as you can see already, it's super muddy. Like it's muddy, it's patchy. And that's because my face is already set. Once you put a finishing or setting powder on your face, you have set your face. So once you try adding more moisture or cream to it, it doesn't like that. Like, see how unblendy that is? Now it's gonna look okay on my jawline because I didn't go all very far down. But guys, that is like straight up mud on my face. And now when I go to put bronzer on because I have a cream, it's gonna grab it and I'm gonna look like a clown but you can tell I mean look at the discoloration and contouring we're gonna go ahead and say that's a mistake people make too contouring is not something that I think you need to do for everyday makeup I, I just think it's silly because it's time-consuming and doesn't really look good in natural light all the time I mean obviously this looks bad because I put powder over it but even so you know if you're doing contouring every day we don't need to look like Kim Kardashian every day it is not a necessary step don't feel obligated to contour um, if you want to and you're taking selfies and you're like I'm gonna look fierce baby can you bring a drink um, then yeah go for it but it's it I mean if you're even if if you're doing a natural contour you're just basically putting bronzer on so just do that don't you don't have to have these harsh lines thank you baby creating you know all that and if you do want to contour you're like jessica i'm gonna contour i don't care what you tell me okay you do you boo and i'm gonna do me so on this side of my face i'm just gonna start with a bronzer because that's the other thing with contouring i always like to start with a bronzer just to, to warm my face up and to see where i need contour because depending on the kind of makeup day I'm having, I might not need contour or I might need more contour, but I'm not gonna know until 
I've worn my face up a little with the bronzer because bronzer acts as a contour. Say it with me. Bronzer acts as a contour. Yay. I don't know how many of you said it with me, but I feel like some of you did. I've gotten enough comments <laughs> about people that say they answer me when I talk <laughs> that I'm hoping that some of you are like sitting at your phones going, contour? I can just hear it. I can hear it. Okay, so just to prove the point to you, I'm now going to put bronzer over this cream contour. And one, it already, like, my brush is like, no. So, yeah, that's what that looks like. So, contouring. Not necessary on a day-to-day -day thing. I would say that contouring is one of those things, that, like, look at that. that. My face is so uneven on that side. Like, the, the cream messed up the powder and the foundation, and then adding more color to it has just created, like, this weird, muddy orange color, whereas opposed to this side of my face, it's just warmed up a little bit. Now, if you're one of those people that's like, Jessica, I'm going to contour. Okay. I'll contour but there is a way to do it and make it look natural. If you use a smaller brush, you go into a shade that's kind of dark, tap, start at your ear line and just kind of do little circles. All that's gonna do is deepen up right on that line under your cheek and give you a little bit of subtle color without looking like you rub dirt on your face, as one of, one of my girls say. Just gonna rub some dirt on my face. And see how that just kind of created a little bit of a hollow, but it's not this hot mess I have going on on this side. All right. I don't really think I have one for blush. Really the only thing about blush, and I mean this isn't, I don't know, I've lost, I had 10 tips. And now I've gotten talking and I don't even know what ten, what to come on or anything. So we're just we're just living our best life here. Um, but a tip about blush, something I, I mean, I can just do this like this. I don't, I can, I can freestyle guys. I can freestyle. I promise not rap, but this, I can freestyle makeup. Um, a mistake that people commonly make with blush <coughs> is one. Oh, there are so many mistakes. One, getting one that is not good for your skin tone. Every blush is wearable to a point. Um, but you have to know how to wear the different colors of blush in order for it to look like a successful makeup look on your face. For example, so on this side of my face, the good side of my face, this side, I am gonna go in with kind of a, actually I'm gonna use the same blush on both sides just to prove a point. Okay, so this is Pop Quiz, which is a bright blush. I'm gonna go in with my blush brush. I'm going to tap, because she is pigmented. And then I'm just gonna very lightly start making a circle on my cheeks. And I just literally am barely touching my cheeks. And I'm making a circle round and round. And then I'm just gonna go in the same, like make a little little circle just back. So I'm basically just warming up the apples on my cheeks and then just going back a little bit, just a little bit. So that gives you a really nice little pop of color without being intense. Here is how you don't do your blush. Same color, I'm gonna tap it. Instead of doing the little round circular motion, some people just do this. And this is not, I don't know. I mean, and this works for some people. Like if you have a really thin face and your face is narrow, this is actually a good blush thing for you. But for me, you, you gotta know, you gotta know your face shape. Like what side looks better? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Okay. I don't even, I wanna say mistake number, but I don't even know what number I'm on. Another mistake that is very common is once you've put your blush and your bronzer down or your blushing or foundation, you don't have to use bronzer, 
is thinking, oh, well now it's on, so I'm stuck with it. Yes and no. I've talked about this before. This is something I am a very firm believer in, and that is veiling. For veiling, I like to use a flat top brush so that I know that there's not any one part of my face that's getting more pressure on it than the other. And so when you veil, and I'm not gonna veil on this side because that's part of the point. Oh my gosh, so this is why you set your under eyes. Do you see this line? Because if you don't set it with powder, it just sinks into any lines and wrinkles you have. So yeah, already seeing that. But on this side, I'm gonna go with just really light strokes. And all I'm doing is kind of blending the, the area between the brush, the blush, the blush and the bronzer. And that just kind of gives you a more finished, more polished look. And it looks, it's like one blends right into another, as opposed to, I now look like Neapolitan ice cream, because I have brown, white, and pink. So, although I think the strawberries are already, already in, always in the middle, isn't it? I don't know, whenever we had Neapolitan ice cream, my dad would eat the entire chocolate section and just leave the strawberry and vanilla. Not cool. Oh, my face. Okay. So, next is brows. <sighs> brows is one of those tricky things because I was trying to think of a mistake that people commonly make with brows. But there really isn't one hard and fast, like, do this versus that. Brows are a personal thing. Like, some people like thinner brows. Some people like thicker brows. Some people want their brows to be, like, on fleek. And when that, like... You want to block your brow and have that sharp corner and all of those look good on different people so it's more about just finding what it looks good on you and your style um and then the one thing that you need to remember that's more just of a tip as opposed to like a mistake is you always want to brush your brows first and you want to brush them in the direction that the hair grows so like right here this hair grows straight up so i brush that straight up and then right about here the hair starts growing sideways and that's when I start brushing sideways so straight up right here and then start sideways like that um you can use powder you can use a gel you can use pomade I prefer pencils um if you don't if you have light brows um brow gels are very good because it will grab onto that hair and darken it if you don't have a lot of brows um, pomades and pencils are good for you. If you have a lot of brows and you just want to do like a clear gel, the clear gel, and I know people are like, what's the purpose of that? One, if you do your brows and you want to put clear gel on top of it, it kind of helps to waterproof it. And second, if you have unruly brows and you want to kind of control them, the, that's what that clear brow is for. So we're just gonna brush this and make sure you brush afterwards too because that's what gives you the natural kind of hair look and see that's kind of just like a natural now and you've seen me do before you've seen me do thicker brows you've seen me do all kinds of brows you can go darker on your brows you can go lighter some people like to go a shade lighter and it just kind of creates a shadow and fills in the holes and that's the most natural way to do your brows um this pencil is about a shade lighter than my actual hair color um you can go a shade darker if you want a more dramatic brow but yeah okay i'm not having a great brow day and that's fine okay so next moving on to eyeshadow guys so Really the biggest mistake, I think, with eyeshadow, there's a lot, but is, we'll, we'll just go through it. Let's just go through it, because like, I don't want to just name it. Okay, first of all, just like you prep your face, you have to prep your eyes. Um, if you want true color payoff, you want your eyeshadow to last, you need to put eyeshadow primer down. And I'm not gonna put eyeshadow primer on my other eye, even though it hurts me a little bit. So I've put my MAC, MAC, my MAC, 
my MAC paneling pot on one eye, I have nothing on the other. Now you can already tell this has evened out the skin tone on my eye. So I'm starting with a better canvas. And I'm gonna use the Sultry palette because it's right in front of me. Um, and I'm lazy. <laughs> um, so the other mistake that people make is not laying down a base shade all over your eyes so that everything blends together well. So I'm gonna put Fresh, which is the base shade in the Sultry palette, down on this side of my eye and I'm, not, I'm still not doing anything on this side. So all I'm doing is taking that Fresh and just kind of dabbing it, packing it on my eyelid to give me a nice, smooth, even colored surface for my eye. My to jazz break my eye look. And guys, my eyes have been on fire. This pollen is killing me. Okay, so obviously you can tell the difference in that, I think. You can also tell that I have a huge line on this side. Let's just be honest. All right, so the, num the second mistake that people make when doing their eyeshadow is not using a transition. A lot of people are like, eyeshadow goes on your eyelids. And then they forget that there's this like, whole space above your eyelids that eyeshadow can also go. So I'm not gonna do a transition on this side. I'm just gonna put color on my eyelid so you can see. But on this side, I'm gonna go into birch and just transition. And I have had a lot of people comment um, asking me, how do I get rid of my droopy eye? How do I you know, do makeup for droopy eyes or for droopy eyelids? You transition. The transition is not just about like making a colorful, fun thing. If you want to minimize the appearance of droop on your eyelids, you need to put a matte color that's kind of a mid-tone above your eyeball. And what that will do as I've said before, is it pushes this part back and pulls your eyes forward. And I think you can tell that just by looking at the difference, right? So I'm gonna darken my transition up a little and since I'm not using a transition, this eye is just getting ignored right now. I'm gonna go in to twig, which is a little bit darker. And just kind of Dark, deepen this up a little. I'm not trying to do like a crazy eye. Crazy eyes. Twig's got some fallout. But this is just deepening it up, giving it more variation. And then that's the other mistake people make with eyeshadow. So on to the next mistake, um, is not blending well enough. Um, you really wanna make sure one, you blend right here because this is the skin that tends to get crepey first. And if you don't blend it with a really puffy tapered brush, you're gonna get those striation marks where there's like lines where it looks like you didn't put eyeshadow. So that's why you really do buff it in and you do the windshield wiper for a while and then you go back and kind of just make sure that there's no point where your eye looks like you did half your makeup. But I mean, look at the difference. That's why you transition. So now we're gonna do a base color. So this is the mistake that other people commonly make. I myself did this when I first started wearing makeup. I did this all the time, like all the time. So this is very common. I'm not like calling anybody out. It's just something that a lot of people do. They pick two colors that are like really contrasting and they just put one on one half and one on the other half. So what I'm gonna do is go in with pearl and I'm gonna put it on first of all the color payout when you don't have anything on your eyelids I mean that's so sad and I actually don't even think we can I don't mean I don't think you can even see that so let's actually go in with bloom because hopefully you'll be able to see that yeah I'm gonna go with bloom on half of my eyeball on both sides so bloom is going right there. Bloom, bloom, bloom. All right. So first of all, the immediate difference that you can tell, I hope, is that the color payoff on the side where I have a base down 
is much better than the color payoff on the side where I don't have a base down. So I bloom on half of both my eyes. Now I'm gonna go in with another paddle brush and I'm gonna go into Dystopian, which is a very dark brown. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna tap it. And then I'm gonna start at the outside of my eye and just kind of rub it in. And just kind of meet it in the middle. And as you can see, the shadow is looking super patchy. That's because I don't have a base down. And I'm not going above my eyelid. And I'm just kind of <laughs> blending a little bit in the middle. So that's my eye look on this side, okay? So I'm gonna use that same dystopian color on the outside of this eye and do my V. You guys can see that, I hope. First of all, look at the color difference. So I'm just kind of darkening that outside corner. This is all about blending, guys. Eyeshadow is really all about blending. Like, you can make pretty much any look look good if you blend enough. And see, I'm just blending that darker shade into my transition so it's just more natural. So I kind of have the same look going on on the eyelid part. Here's where you fix this mistake. You take a, I like to take a shimmer color that's in between the two colors. So I'm gonna take rose quartz, which is kind of a pinky gold, and I am going to lay that down right in between the two colors, going back and forth between the two colors. And what that has done is create a high point in the middle of my eyeball and also transitioned my eyeshadow from pink to brown without being like, ah, pink brown. <laughs> so, see? See how that looks? And if you wanted to do it even more, and that's what's so fun about adding color. I'm going into Cinder now, which is a darker, and I'm gonna go over the Dystopian just a little bit on my eyeball, and that's just a darker shimmer. And I'm blending that into the Rose Quartz. And now, I mean, guys, that's like a, t I mean, it's a total difference, I think. One side of my face is definitely looking different than the other one. So yeah, so the only thing I would do on this side is I would actually go back with Birch just a little bit and kind of blend again. It's all about blending. Your blending game must be strong. As I think Confidence Plus says, blend to your elbows. Alright, so yeah, so there's the difference. We can all see that. So the next mistake, moving on. Hey guys, so I accidentally deleted part of my video. So I skipped eyeliner, sorry. Alright, so we have three more tips and then we're going to recap and we'll be done. Obviously, I hope you can tell the difference in the sides of my face. If not, I'm sorry, but there's a difference. <laughs> like my right eye looks tiny and my left eye looks not tiny. I mean, I'm not saying it's like, oh my God, look how big my eye is. But also you guys can't see, but I am gonna have my husband come in close afterwards. But since I did not set this concealer, like I'm already getting smudgies under my eye. That quick, that quick. So my next common mistake is with highlighter. So I'm gonna use the Mega Glow and Blossom Glow and show you the mistake. Okay, so shine emphasizes, any kind of shiny thing emphasizes pore size. So a lot of people go a little heavy handed on the highlighter. So, and there's a certain place you want to stop. Um, so wrong is like starting at your temple and just going all the way into your nose. And I mean, I don't know if you guys can tell, but all, this looks like a grapefruit right here. There's so many dimples and little texture things and it's drawing attention to that texture. And highlight is supposed to highlight the good parts of your face, not the bad. Um, so yeah, that's the incorrect way. The correct way is to start like a little past where your eyeshadow ends 
and you want to kind of just cautiously brush it because you don't know how much you need um, and you don't want to go past the middle of your eye so you're never going past here because the closer you get to your nose the larger your pores are naturally and so and then I always go on my brow bone and then I kind of go up And it's highlighted, I'm gonna put a little bit more on this side. It's highlighted, but it's not like, this is, this is too much. This is intense. This is too much highlighter. I have lines, it's awful. This side you're like, oh, okay, that's pretty. So, second to last tip, overlining your lips. Ladies, we are all guilty of this. And I am here to tell you that it's not necessarily a mistake if done correctly. You can overline your lips and it look fine. The problem that people have is that they go overboard with overlining, overboard with the overlining, yes. So, I'm trying to find an eye pencil that's like a good color. Okay, we're just gonna use this Gerard one. I'm gonna use the um, Gerard in something no idea what color this is it's a color okay first of all there is a tool nyx has one of these this is actually a prescriptive one i've had forever they last forever and it's kind of um it's like a retouching thing i have one that's bobby brown too but it's bigger so i don't like using it for my lips and i can't find it right now but um it's basically a pencil and it's really waxy and what you do is, like if you have problems with your lipstick bleeding, or you wanna emphasize your brow, you can always just take a little bit of this right here. I should've done this on the good side, but oh well. And see how that, like you can't really see it, but it highlights my brow. But what you wanna do with your mouth, is you wanna go under your lip, and then off to the side because one it's gonna highlight your mouth and I'm going under any color on my lip so and then on this obviously on the top you're going over any color but if you find that your lipstick bleeds this will stop it and then if you get one I know the body brown one comes in a bunch of different colors I think the next one is this just like there's like a light a medium and a dark um, you can just go back with your finger and kind of blend it because it might I mean this looks you can obviously tell that something's on but it's also because I don't have anything else on my lips so on this side I'm gonna show you the right way to overline your lips on this side we're just gonna go in go in for it so people because there is a natural kind of light lighter skin right here and people will be like doing this thing oh my gosh And the thing is too about lining your lips is you need to go with your lips natural shape. You can't make your lips any shape you want. I mean, you can. It's not gonna look good though. So on this side, I have lined not, well, I did a really crappy job too, hold on. So on this side, I've lined completely outside of my lip line. It's like hard to do, like my hand doesn't want to do it. But Jessica, what are you doing? So the correct way to line your line up, like make your lips look bigger and overline a little bit. You want to start on the natural line where your lip starts on color mm -hmm. and start there and just kind of color it in a little. This is hard to do and talk. So that's where your natural lip starts. So then what you want to do, once you've gotten your natural lip line down, all you want to do is just kind of go a little higher. So my lip still looks bigger, but it's not overdrawn. And same thing with this, you want to go, right, or your color stops. 
And then on your bottom lip, I do not recommend overlining the outside, but if you want to overline the inside, you can just go a little bit and just kind of blend it into that color. Wrong, right. I think that difference is pretty obvious. So I'm gonna go in with whatever color this is, Gemini. And then the last, ooh, that was a really good color match. I just like saw it in my eye, I was like, that's gonna match. Yay me. Cause yes, you've created more lip space, but one, this is a good read, I mean, it's gonna bleed. Okay, so the last mistake that people make is setting spray. You have to set your face. If you want your makeup to last, you have got to find a good setting spray. Urban Decay's All Nighter is amazing. Morphe's Continuous Spray is amazing. Right now I've been on the NYX Dewy Finish train just because it's out here and I'm lazy. I don't wanna go in my room and get the All Nighter. So just when you're done with your makeup, just a quick little spray, you want to dry it off, and then you're done. Because if you don't set your makeup, I don't care whether you live where it's cold, where it's hot, where it's humid, where it's dry, about halfway through the day, you're gonna go in the bathroom, wash your hands, and look at your face, and everything's gonna start doing this. It's all gonna start separating into patches. So now I'm gonna have my husband pull in really close, and we're gonna go over the steps. Number one, try not to put your foundation on with a lit LED vanity light because that is a false image that's not what you look like. Two, choose your foundation wisely. Choose it according to your skin tone, choose it according to your skin type, and go outside and see what it looks like in natural light. Make sure you're, you are matching it to your neck because that's the closest thing to your face. Three, you don't have to contour. And if you do, don't use creams over powder because once you put a powder down, your face is set. That's why it's called setting powder because your face is set. So if you try to put a liquid or a cream over it, it's just gonna clump up and make muddy lines. Blush, learn to apply blush the way that emphasizes your facial features. There's charts and graphs for that too. Um, so this one, I just kinda, you know, Gently brush the color on. Like I said, you can use the right color as you want, but this is clearly not right. So then eyeshadow, use a primer, use a transition color, and blend, 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 blend. Number whatever. <laughs> Find an eyeliner shape that is appropriate to your eye shape. Don't just think that because it works for one person, it's winged liners do not look good on everybody. Going all the way around your eye looks good on pretty much nobody, but some people can pull it off. Um, and it's an, it's an editorial look, but you know, find what works for you, what emphasizes your eyes the most, and you know, works for what the look you're looking for. So I want my eyes to look bigger. This is not the way to go. It's just not. Then, highlighter. Can you zoom in closer so they can see the pores on my face? You do not want to go past the middle of your eye with your, with your highlighter. And I'm, you should be able to see what. Can you see on the camera? You can see my pores. Like right here, looks like a grapefruit. And then on this side, you can't even see my pores. Grapefruit, no pores. Grapefruit, no pores. And then finally, well, second to last, don't overline your lips. God gave you what they gave, what, she, what, what he gave you. You can use different colors and make them look bigger. You can overline the correct way. You can put that highlighter wax pencil around it, which is gonna make your lips pop. But don't go past your natural line. It looks sloppy, it looks messy, and it ends up bleeding everywhere. And then finally, set your makeup. Set it, set it, set it, and forget it. But really, this all boils down to blending, 
most of it's all about blending. So I hope this has been informative. Um, if you guys have any other questions or you want me to talk about something else, um, please comment down below. I, I'm pretty good about answering all my comments, so if you have a question specific to you, I would love to be able to advise you in any way that I can. Um, I did put a poll up on my community tab if you guys could go jump over and take a vote about a different kind of video that I'm thinking about starting. Um, and yeah, so everybody, deep breath in. Deep breath out and be still.